Hi everyone and welcome to the garage here at ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D printing. Today we're going to go a little far afield instead of talking about 3D printing we're going to talk about 4K video and pan and zoom. And to do that I've got this little fellow who's a little nervous being on the video for the first time. This is Pixel. You want to say hi to everybody Pixel? There we go. Whoops, caught in my microphone. Come on, un unhook. Let's see, let me get, get your foot out. There we go. This is Pixel. Say hi. Say hi. There you go. That's Pixel. The reason I have Pixel, obviously, is we're going to show you zooming and panning. You can see now the entire area of the garage from my wife's hobby stuff to my stuff to the 3D printer to the workbench. And of course, you can see little Pixel over here who doesn't want to smile for the camera right this minute. He's a little nervous. Um, but over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you how to use ScreenFlow to take a 4K video, zoom in, and make use of it so you can do operator-free pan and zoom. So why don't we do that? Let's take a look at a couple more examples and then look at how we can put this together. Okay, welcome to ScreenFlow. This is the tool I use to manage and produce most of my video tutorials and all of the pan and zoom videos you've seen in producing the uh, DIY IT discovery series on 3D printing. Uh, let's grab a piece of video and take a look at what we're dealing with here. So this is a chunk of video. This is, uh, as you can see, pretty much the video that I was showing earlier. Uh, this is a piece of 4K video taken on uh, an iPhone 6S Plus uh, mounted on a tripod. All I'm doing is I have uh, the iPhone 6S Plus, a tripod, and this little $30 microphone that you might be able to see. So what you may notice is you see this the sort of thing that looks like the viewport, the area that you're actually looking at. That is a 1080p viewport. That is 1920 pixels across by 1080 pixels down. But what's around it, as you see, as I sort of move this piece around here, is this is the 4K video. And as you can see, it goes much, much further than that little viewport. That's because instead of 1920 by 1080, we're looking at uh, 3840 by 2160, 3840 across and 2160 down. So it's a considerably different sized piece. And so what happens is, as you can see, I mean, I just keep going here. I can, let me move over to a spot where you can see a good picture of a pixel. I should probably, uh, let me detach the audio. Well, one of the things that you can do is pull the audio out from the video. And I don't want the audio to run um, in the background as we're doing this, so because it'll get a little confusing to show you what we're doing. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And so now we just have video. Now let me see if I can find. There's Pixel. There you go. So as you can see, this is now. I'm not zooming in further. I could do a lot of, of further zooms to get in uh, into this video, but this is what your or my camera would take if I if it was set at 1080p. And you can see that even at, if it were set at 1080p, there's, there's pretty good resolution here. You can see the screen, you can see the MakerBot on the 3D printer, you can see Pixel's face. Let's see if we get another little picture of Pixel's face here. He's coming over and getting comfy. There we go. That's our little boy. So you can see this stuff in uh, the 1080p window, but there's all this other stuff around that's also crisp and clear and available, like the Dremel and the Dremel tools I'm using, my wife's uh, hobby stuff. In this direction, if we come down here, you can get a much better picture of the MakerBot replicator. You would assume, in fact, that if I moved it over just slightly, you wouldn't even see the dog, you'd just see the, the MakerBot replicator. And so what I've been doing, the way that I've been creating this idea of operator free pan and zoom, and essentially what that means is the video is taken once, I just set the camera and forget it, and then in this program I'm doing uh, the tweaks that give us a pan and a zoom. So let's let's look at that, and, and we do that. This timeline works, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take this timeline back to, let's see, where's our little guy? I'm gonna take this timeline back to when I put him down, to right about there. 
and just split uh, the clip and you can uh, edit and split a clip. And I'm just gonna get rid of the early fluff because it doesn't really matter too much and, and move this over. And as you can see, I can basically tighten up or expand the timeline. And, and this helps when you wanna get into more detail uh, usually when you're dealing with audio. And, and in, in this example, I'm just gonna show you video for a moment. So let's say what we wanted to do is we wanted to start off with a wide shot. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply take this whole window and I'm gonna shrink it down. And as you can see, as I'm holding the shift key down while I'm doing it, there's a lot of shrinking to get this whole uh, 3840 by 2160 window into the space. And if I did, there you go, and I started to play, you'd see it start to play. And as you can see, this in this chunk, I'm still hooking up the microphone and, and all that sort of thing. But let's say I wanted to focus in after we did this wide establishing shot. We've got this nice little establishing shot here. And while I'm fumbling with the microphone, I want you to look at Pixel. So let's zoom in on the little guy right around here. So that brings us to this set of functions, which are basically video features. And, and ScreenFlow is very, very powerful. And I'm not, I'm not going to teach you ScreenFlow. I'm going to just show you what you can do with the pan and zoom capability of ScreenFlow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an action. I'm just going to say a little video action. If you come over here, you can see this little tiny yellow spot. And this is where maybe expanding it'll make it easier because you can see that this is a video thing. And what I can do is I'm going to come up to this corner and I'm going to scale the video to 100%. So I'm still at full resolution, but now the video is at 100%. And now we have a nice good picture of Pixel. And so if I come back to the beginning here, Watch what happens. Now we have the full screen and actually watch the outside of the area. Watch this gray area as well. Okay, here we go, play and zoom. And so you can see that what just happened was, um, you can see the video now, we we'll come back out here, you can watch it effectively zoom back out. And what's nice about ScreenFlow is that entire in-betweening of the zoom, this, this piece here is actually they're taking this image and they're taking this image and they're computing the in-between. So they're doing the frame jumps for the zoom. So we're able to do a, a pretty decent zoom uh, as you saw. I'll just take it from here again and zoom on pixel. So we're going from, you know, 4K resolution, you see the entire garage to just the little guy. So that's really neat. Now the next thing that, that I was talking about is the pan capability, which is basically moving the camera from left to right. So now that we've seen Pixel, let's keep him there for just a sec. Oh, he's such a cute little dog. Let's pan this thing, and you select the clip you want to add this to. I'm going to add a new action, and this time I'm not going to change the scale, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the video and I'm going to move it over to here. And that way you're seeing the 3D printer. Um, and that's actually a little too big even for this. So I might actually shrink it a little bit. So let's, let's do the pan first, just to do a basic pan. And then we'll come back and we'll look at a slight shrink. So here we have pixel. And then we're just moving the image and there's your pan. And so that looks like a camera is moving, but really it's not. Let's do that again. It's just the viewport on the 4K video. But there's no operator work doing. This was all done in recording, and I'm sitting here in, in what is essentially post and making that happen. Now, I could have done both a pan and a zoom. So let's come back to before pixel. Let's get rid of this transition. We'll come back over to roughly the same time when he's poking around. We'll move it over to here. And I'm going to add an action. But this time, I'm bringing the 3D printer in and I'm gonna scale it down a little bit so you get to see the full 3D printer in its space and I'm moving it over and I'll scale it up a little bit. Let's just, oops, let's take it to, uh, down a little bit more. There we go. 
So it's a subtle difference in size, but you'll notice that now this is actually at 87%. And so we are doing a pan that was also a zoom at the same time. So this is as if somebody's moving the camera and controlling the lens at the same time. We could also do something like pan and zoom up. And we'll do that, it, with the resolution won't be quite as good, but we'll, we'll do that by coming up here to the display on the printer. So I'm gonna add another action point. And this time I'm going to scale the screen up quite a bit and come in here so you can see the control panel. So now if I come back, you'll see that we have a pan over and then a zoom in. And the zoom is not just zooming in, you'll notice it's also moving the frame up. So the frame is focusing in on a specific spot and moving up. So um, that gives us a lot of flexibility. And these are the two functions that I've been using for the most in producing these things. Um, so let's take this and let's go back out to a larger view so you can maybe see me. Uh, we don't want to see me yet. Let's, uh, well, why not? You can watch me struggle put the microphone on. Um, so let's move this just a little bit further out because I have such a great expression right there. So we're panning, we're zooming, we're coming up and looking at me drop the microphone. And in fact, if we wanted to, to see what is he doing, right? There's an action going on down there. So I've dropped the microphone here, right? So let's add an action. And in this action, we're gonna move this down and maybe even do a little zoom in so you can see what me fumbling. And then you can watch me find the microphone and then we could take that action back up and move back up here. And so as you can see, let's take this back from the beginning for a second, go all the way back to the beginning and you'll see that we have a zoom in on pixel. We watch the little guy for a second. Then we move over to the 3D printer, we look at the display, we move up to me, oops, dropped the microphone, came back up. Now that was probably a little bit too fast to transition. And so as you practice this, you can look at what you're doing. But the interesting thing about what you can do with this, which you can't do, for example, with um, a camera, is you can come back in and you can go like the microphone drop here. You can see that these are two separate transitions and I can be like, oh, that's, that's really a little confusing. So I might wanna separate those transitions apart. So now you're coming up here and it's a little bit slower, or I might decide, well, I don't really wanna let you see that, that little activity there as I'm fumbling with the microphone. So here I'm zooming up to me, right? I might decide, well, let's change that. Let's make that instead of up to me, let's focus in on puppy dog. Here's puppy, we're zooming in a little bit extra on puppy because the resolution can handle it. And then let's get rid of these extra pieces. Go a little further. The microphone drop happens behind the scenes. I'm fumbling with it up there. And then uh, let's at this point, for example, say, zoom back up to <laughs> my very uncoordinated looking face. So we'll come in and now you can see that what I was able to do is I could actually re-edit a scene that normally I would have had to keep in the camera and shoot just perfectly to focus on cute little pixel there for a minute and instead of looking at me as I'm dealing with the camera. That's my boy, that's my boy. Come here, oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. Well, there you go, you've seen it. I'm gonna put this little guy back into the other room cause he's a little nervous being in here. But thank you for joining me on our latest discovery series, this time some video techniques. And always come back to, to DIY IT on ZDNet. And if you wanna be updated about new programs and, and new updates, go ahead and click the little subscribe button over there and I'll pet Pixel for you. Thanks a lot.
Bye bye. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. That's my pixel. Thanks, everybody.